This is uh, Damian McNamara, Global Medical News Network, and I'm here with Dr. Vincent A. Miller of the Thoracic Oncology Service at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City. And we're here at the American Society of Clinical Oncology Annual Meeting in Orlando. We presented a randomized double-blind phase three study, and it was the first to show addition of erlotinib to bevacizumab for maintenance therapy significantly prolongs progression-free survival for patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer. Can you tell me um, why the study was stopped early? So this is a trial in which the primary endpoint was what we call progression-free survival, or the time to which a patient's cancer starts to grow again. That was the primary endpoint of the study. And uh, as a blinded committee looked at outcomes between the, the two arms of the study, the placebo arm and the arm that had the erlotinib, they saw that the erlotinib group was doing consistently better, that the population of patients were having the, uh, their cancer's progression delayed, and it met statistical significance. And you found a significant difference, 4.76 months versus 3.75, in terms of progression-free survival uh, in the placebo group, right? That's correct. I think there are other ways to look at that, because some may say that, you know, the cost of drugs is expensive and a one-month difference is it worth it. But I think we, we also showed in our slides today the proportion of patients who were progression-free at three months and six months, and hopefully in future iterations at a year, there will be a continued group of patients who are benefiting more from the combination than from the placebo with bevacizumab. And those are the, the differences that really matter to oncologists and matter to patients and matter to families. So the study's ongoing? Well, the, the follow-up is ongoing. There are no additional people being enrolled, but we're, we're following both for uh, additional events and also for uh, survival, which we hope to report later this year, the overall survival of the populations. All right, so you already had the progression free survival, yes. and now you're going to look next at the overall survival. Yeah, the, the set overall survival is a secondary endpoint, meaning the primary the endpoint of the study was progression free survival. But certainly, it is uh, hoped, of course, to, to show that it leads to a longer life, and, and uh, uh, that's the, the, real, the real thing we're all after in this, in this disease. So, in addition to overall survival, are there any other unanswered questions you'd like to look at in the future? Well, I think for this. Uh, for this trial, I think the, the things we've discussed, including the biomarkers, safety, and efficacy, um, are, are the, the, the most important uh, endpoints. It was not a quality of life tool in this study. There was one in the Saturn, and you may have heard one also presented in the Van Dettenib study that Dr. Herbst uh, presented earlier. Uh, so I think for, from this particular study, uh, one of the ideas would be to take the subgroups in which it looked like there was the greatest uh, benefit and perhaps you know move that even into earlier stage. Maybe it could be used in frontline patients with those characteristics for a uh, less toxic, more protracted type of treatment. This is Damian McNamara with the Global Medical News Network.